Okay, so let's do one more change of basis problem. And this one also involves polynomials. So if you are in my recitations, I will be doing an example that has matrices, which is really interesting. And uh, yeah, so let's just run through this first. I'll talk about how to deal with, you know, other types of bases later. So in this case, we're having a basis B is equal to this and a basis C is equal to one minus X plus three X squared comma two comma three plus X squared. Okay. And our vector space is going to be, uh, it looks like then P two R, right? So our, so notice, uh, in this example, so I want to be very clear these two bases are for this one vector space all right so we're, we're only inside one vector space but i have two bases b and c are different bases for this one vector space all right one vector space why is this a big deal six five we start taking bases these uh bases in different vector spaces and the kids get super confused like what the hell is happening like what's the difference from the change of basis the difference is right here we're in change of basis we're in one single vector space even above right we are in one single vector space so this was the example in the previous video right we're only in p1r in the previous example here we're only in p2r okay so we're only in one vector space i'm making a huge deal out of this because you're gonna get confused and this is how you distinguish uh six five from this chapter okay now with that rant over <laughs> let's 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 move on then so all right what's the shortcut how do I find P, B, C, or uh, is sometimes written as P, B, C. It depends on what your professors like doing. And so what's the shortcut? The shortcut is this. I'm going to create an augmented matrix, right, uh, using the standard basis, which is 1x and x squared for P2. All right. You need to know what your standard bases are. And what I'm going to do, well, why is it? Why is this notation particularly good? It's because I'm going to write the bases of B on the right-hand side, and then I'm going to write the bases of C on the left-hand side. And that's what happens, right? So, all right, let's do this. So what is B? B is negative 4, 1, negative 6, okay? And then 6, 0, 2, all right, be careful. There's no X term. And then negative 6, negative 2, 4. What is C? C is 1 and negative 1, 3, 2, 0, 0, 3, 0, 1. Okay. Again, why am I doing this? Because if you remember up here in the previous example, I said something along the lines of someone clever would have realized that uh, these two matrices were the same thing. And therefore, I could have solved for J1, J2, K1, K2 in one single step and that's what i'm doing down here all right and this is why it works it's it works because essentially what i do is that i take this matrix or, or maybe i take this column and i just smoosh it on here okay cool but then you realize then that oh then this side becomes B and this side becomes C. All right, so this is in the previous video, I, the example in the previous video. So if you're confused about that, watch the previous video, then watch this one. It will make a lot more sense. Okay, so that's what I did down here, right? I just essentially took this guy and I smushed him up here. And why can I do that? Well, it's because this guy up front is the same. Okay, cool. And now what's the goal? The goal is I actually want to reduce this guy on the left-hand side. I want to reduce to the identity matrix or I3, right? Uh, I, let's just call it I3. Let's just call it I. Um, I is always going to be the identity matrix. So I want to reduce the left-hand side of the I because that forces 
the pivots to be won, and then I can instantly recover what my scalars need to be. Amazing, right? So, yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna reduce this uh, left hand side to one, and so we got the identity matrix. So let's do that then. Uh, here's one, two, three. And uh, yeah, what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna zero out this guy, right? And I'm gonna zero out that guy. So this becomes uh, zero, two, three. Oh, don't forget the augmented part. Okay, so I added row one, row two. So this becomes negative three, six, negative eight. Okay, and then uh, row three minus three times row one, zero, negative six, negative eight. Um, then uh, positive six, uh, negative sixteen, uh, twenty-two. Okay, hopefully this math is right. I have a final answer on my screen, but I don't have the intermediate steps. So, <laughs> um, all right. Oh, this is actually really cool because I'm actually going to just zero out these guys right away. Uh, there's no reason not to because that that actually works out super nicely. So what do I get? You subtract the rows and then you get negative one. Uh, so you get one, you subtract row one, row two, one, zero, zero. Okay, now you get negative one, zero, positive two. Okay, and here's O two three. And I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna take this row and I'm gonna multiply, uh, I'm gonna divide this row No, I'm not going to divide that row by anything. We're just going to write this row down. Uh, 0, negative 6, negative 8. All right, and then negative 3, 6, negative 8. 6, negative 16, 22. Okay, reduce. Uh, how do we reduce? We get rid of this guy. And, or let's use the red. And we're going to get rid of that guy. So we're going to do 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 0, 2. All right, so uh, row 3 plus 3 times row 2. Uh, 0, 2, 3. Negative three, six, negative eight, and then this becomes zero, zero. Okay, uh, three times row two. Oh, this is one. That works out perfectly. And here I get then negative three, negative sixteen plus three times row two, so that's two. And then I get uh, twenty-two plus negative twenty-four, so negative two. Alrighty. And then now, okay, we now we just need to reduce this guy. Um, or we, well, we zero out that guy, right? And so what do I get? One, zero, zero, uh, zero, two, zero, 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 one, negative one, zero, two, negative three, six, negative eight. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Negative three, two, negative two. Okay, and that times three times minus the bottom, so that's going to be six, uh, zero, negative two right and then finally divide that middle row by two I get one zero 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 one zero 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 one one negative one zero two three zero negative one negative three two negative two and here I have my identity matrix and guess what's on the left uh, right hand side amazing it's, it's it's actually the change of basis matrix so all right, so what's the shortcut? The shortcut is you place all the entries of B on the right-hand side. You put all the entries of C on the left-hand side, and you reduce to I and P, B, C. So instead of doing all this crap up here, uh, this three-step process, uh, you can just do this row reduction. And I, it doesn't matter how you do it. I think this personally is a lot easier. And yeah, try to do what I just did with uh, the example from previous video and yeah that's how you do change of basis so again this is shortcut for change of basis gonna emphasize one last time that we're in the same vector space because we're creeping up on chapter six and that's when everyone's gonna be like Bleh. so thanks for watching and we'll move on to four eight now